family, it's time for a true look at your world. <laughs> Let's get hooked up for Pack Therapy. Here's your hosts, Tim Donnelly and Graham Hill. Welcome back into another edition of the Pack Therapy Podcast. Before we bring in our esteemed guest, I want to remind everybody to uh, subscribe, like everywhere you can find your podcasts on our YouTube channel, 99.9 The Fan. Pass it along to your friends. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, I'm Tim Donnelly, Graham Hill, hosting the show with me as always. And joining us today, we have a, a senior guard for the NC State Wolfpack men's basketball team, Casey Morsell. Uh, Casey, thank you very much for for taking the time. Let's start with the important stuff. Uh, what's it like inside the team locker room, inside the team dynamic once your teammate flips the double birds? I mean, it, it was the double bird heard round the world. How do you interact with uh, DJ Horn moving forward? Man, <laughs> It was crazy, man. We had no clue. Uh, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see it. Uh, it kind of just was something that um, built up, kind of over time. And um, you know, <laughs> I remember, you know, one of our, our media guy, Craig. He kind of went up to him, and was like, <laughs> you know, you know, you just went viral, and uh, it was. <laughs> we were like, for what? Like, you know, what happened? And uh, yeah, we, we saw what happened, and uh, you know, so we're. I mean, uh, DJ, you know, he learned from it, and uh, you know, it won't happen again. I mean, Star Wars night is fun and all, but I think there could have been a prime opportunity to maybe pass out some foam fingers at the games this past <laughs> this past Saturday. I, I don't know. Sure. Casey, now that you're halfway through the season and you guys sit at 13-5 overall, 5-2 and two in the ACC, what are some personal goals for you as a player that you're just trying to accomplish to get the team's success going? Uh, Well, the personal goal for me, I mean, I'm just thinking championship. I mean, really, I mean, the personal accolades aren't really uh something that, like, it's not really something I'm really chasing. It's just, you know, for me, I just want to go out on a high note, not just for NC State, but um, for Raleigh. I mean, you know, this, this school deserves it. This city deserves a championship, and that's my main focus. T take us into your mind a little bit here, right? Because you talk about, you know, team first, team yeah. always, team only, and, you know, every every bit of your interaction has been that. Um, but, uh, you know, to, to call a spade a spade, you shot over 40% from three last year. You're down around 30 this year. We all know shooters shoot. Are, is is that just the mindset? You have to get more shots up to get into a rhythm, and eventually that's going to hit? I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think shots will fall. Um, like you said, I mean, it was – that's a slump that I went through. Um, mm -hmm. And the season's not over. It's only January. So, I mean, I think a high streak is coming. And, um, you know, and that will propel us to be very successful heading into March. Now, Casey, you had a good performance against Virginia Tech, scoring 19 points. But overall, as a team, still struggling a little bit from three-point shooting, six of 19 as a whole. What What are you guys doing in practice just to work on turning that around for the rest of the season? Yeah, I mean, just you guys got to rep it out um, in terms of our shooting. Like we got to we got to rep it out. Um, and um, for us, I mean, our identity is defense. So I mean, we we've placed a, a huge emphasis on locking teams down and and you know, doing the best we can on the defensive end. But scoring is, you know, just as important, if not more. So we got to, um, you know, just really just knock down shots, make shots. Um, that's simple. It's, it's, you know, all of our mistakes are, are fixable. And um, that's some of the, the best thing. You know, that's the best position to be in when all your mistakes are fixable. You, you, I, I go back to when, when we caught up with each other at ACC tip-off. And, and in the preseason, so much about your season was, you know, these new faces coming in and, and all of these, the, the, the transfers and, and getting to know each other. And you were talking about trying to get the team together. Uh, you know, something like defense is so much about on, uh, like rotations and knowing if, if, if you rotate, somebody's going to have your back and somebody's going to have their back and, and, and all those sorts of things. Are, are you there yet? You mentioned it's only halfway through the season. There's still a lot of basketball left to play. MJ Rice, Cam Woods are even later additions than, than at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cause they came in kind of mid season. Are you to the point where, like, you know, you all know each other in, in you know, that freaky basketball thing where you know where each other's going to be even without seeing them? Uh, well, I mean, we're not completely there yet. I'm going to be honest. We're not completely there yet. But, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely – I mean, that takes time. Like, that takes time. I mean, the year before we had so many extra practices due to our Bahamas overseas trip. Like, we were just – you know, we had more, more time to kind of figure it out. But now, you know – We'll get there eventually, and um, we're heading in that direction. I mean, guys are coming in, producing, um, especially on the defensive end, JT and um, DJ, just figuring out, you know, where guys will be and Mo coming in, being a, a stretch in terms of finishing the possession because that's 
a major part of our defense is finishing the possession and eliminate second chance opportunities. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're building and we're heading in that direction. How difficult is that to do in ACC play, right? We, we are all aware of uh, the meat grinder that is the ACC, where one game finishes, you, I mean, there's no time to, to dwell on that. The next game is, is bearing down at you. How difficult is it to kind of continue getting to know people and continuing to learn where they like things while also, right, the scouting report, you got to be on to the next game right away? Yeah, it's all important. It's all important. It all goes hand in hand, essentially. Like, um, you know, the sound of report, knowing, you know, somebody's, you know, if they prefer left or right, just mm -hmm. as important as, you know, you know, someone preferring to shoot from the corner three on, on your own team. So, I mean, it, it all kind of goes hand in hand and you, you need both to be at a, a very high level in order to win. Casey, I want to look ahead to you guys' next game, Virginia tomorrow night. Uh, what's this game like for you personally? I know you used to play there. Is it always kind of a little bit of an emotional trip back up to Charlottesville when you play these guys? You know, honestly, you know, it, it's been so long that, uh, you know, I'm three years removed. So, I mean, you know, yes, I, I do have history, but, um, you know, it was, you know, I kind of, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't really feel like um, anything, anything special. I kind of think of it as like a normal game just because I played against them so many times already in, in the Wolfpack uniform. Um, so, I mean, you know, the state, I mean, the, the jitters and everything, that's, that was years ago. <laughs> but, but talking scouting report, right, you have to know that system better than than most. You almost turned into an assistant coach this week about, <laughs> you know, like, hey, guys, this is the pack line. This is what they're trying to do to us. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, actually, you know, I spent a lot of time on our on our scout team um, just trying to uh, mimic, you know, how they do block and mover and, and how they run their how they run their offense. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's it's different um, this year um, from when I was there, um, just simply just because like. Um, the I don't know their dynamic is just different. Like the bigs that I play with are different from their bigs. Like you know I play with the more traditional, you know the Mamadies, um, Jay Huffs, like Fran. Like they don't I mean, they don't have that type of uh, physicality in the front court. Um, they got a lot of guys who prefer to shoot the three and play on the wing. Um, even Jay Huff, like he you know he could shoot the ball, but he was you know looking for lobs for the most part and and stuff around the basket. So. You know, um, their their dynamic is different, but for the most part, their um, foundation is still the same. Well, let, let's talk about your bigs in that same way. Middlebrooks and Diara, to me, over the last couple games, have have really impressed and shown that you know they should be depended upon, maybe even more off the bench. What are you seeing out of, out of those two guys? Right, the DJ Burns, it, it's so unusual, it's wow. so different than what we see from the other guys. But but from Diara and Middlebrooks, what what are they developing into for your squad? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it all starts on the defensive end. They they, they had a, a great spark in terms of, you know, being able to guard ball screens and, and, and finish possessions. Um, and, and that's what we need because, you know, especially come, coming down the stretch, a lot of teams just try to um, – a lot of teams just try to go into ball screen actions, um, essentially try to win the game. So the fact that we could, like, you know, have that um, – have that kind of – figured out ahead in the crunch time. I mean, it, it provides a great spark for our team. Now, Casey, when you guys played these, when you guys played Virginia back on January 6th at PNC Arena, to me, it felt like one of your more balanced games, both on offense and defense. What was working so well for you guys on that win or in that win? You said at PNC Arena? At PNC Arena, yeah, back on oh, January 6th. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, we were able to guard at a high level. Um, and when we were able to guard, we were able to score. <clears throat> um, and it, it led to easy opportunities on the offensive end for us. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, when we got up a good amount, we were able to kind of keep the lead simply because, you know, UVA doesn't – they don't play fast. And, you know, when they're down, they're not used to playing fast and trying to, you know, rush back to get into the lead. <laughs> so that's not really who they are. But – um, so that's pretty much, you know, what it takes. I mean, that's pretty much the same strategy you had in this game. we got to get a comfortable lead and be able to run with it because, um, you know, you don't want to be down the UVA. I mean, it's it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a long, long grind trying to come back. I, I want to ask you a quick question about Coach Keats because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you brought it up. You, you've now been in Raleigh a long time. I, you know, there, there's transfers, then there's transfers that happened a long time ago, and you're, you're well-established here mm -hmm. in Raleigh. So, so you've seen, you know, Keats over the years. And I think this season he's he's let fans in a little bit more on on maybe his like edge or his anger or his intensity. Uh, obviously, the Wake Forest game is the the one where it all came to a, a you know an explosion and the ejection and after the game and everything. 
But do you see a different Coach Keats when it comes to like, hey, we're not, no one's going to be able to say we're not a tough team or, uh, you know, practice or games? Like, do, do you see a difference this year based on the years you've been been uh, playing for him in the past? Oh, uh, <laughs> um, no. I mean, I'm going to be real. No. I mean, he, he's, he's kind of been the same. I guess he is showing a little more uh, to the public mm -hmm. this year, but um, he, he's a very passionate guy. Um, and as much as, you know, I guess in his public facade, he, he tries to be very professional and, and, and you know, just you have a good image. But he, he's a he's a good guy that's very passionate and uh, he cares about the game and he wants to win, um, you know, just as much as everybody else in the program. So um, that's really what we need, man. That's really what, uh, you know, makes a big difference, his passion and, and his uh you know his value for for winning at a high level um it, it's it's really what you know has propelled us to be who we are so so is it coach is it you is it is it one of the other veterans when a game like the virginia tech game happens and that the, the second half particularly on the defensive side some of the things that you you wanted to do going into the game weren't able to happen who's the one kind of grabbing the team and and you know letting them know we need to be better than that or or that's not how we play basketball yeah, I mean, um, honestly, during the game, I mean, it, it's one of those things where I guess V Tech, like they, um, you know, they were making adjustments fast. Um, mm -hmm. And as, as a player on the court, you, you're trying to realize, okay, you take away one thing and then, you know, they hit the next option, right? So um, it, it wasn't one of those things like we were playing bad. I mean, they were just hitting shots at a high level. Um, and um, we were, you know, playing hard. We followed, you know, scouting reports, followed strategies, and, um, you know, you know, so they were they were just still um, making shots. And this is the ACC. It's a high level. You know, your people are going to make, you know, tough shots and, and you know, and especially coming down to crunch time. So, yeah, I guess, you know, I guess on the court, I guess it's me and off the court is Keats. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Keats also mentioned after the Virginia Tech loss that he wanted to see you guys get back to being tougher as a team. Where does that start as a unit for y'all? Um, well, I think we're tough. Um, I think we, we could – you can always be tougher, uh, especially, you know, I think, you know, as a player, one of the things that kind of um, got to us in the V Tech game was definitely fatigue. So fighting through that battle, um, you know, playing full court and all, also running fast uh, on the offensive end, um, it, you know, that, that played a part. But um, I think one another thing for us is also just, you know, being smart. I mean, toughness is, I mean, I guess that's really what it is. I mean, we just weren't as, um, locked in for a full 40 minutes. And um, like I said, I mean, that, that definitely gave uh, VTech an advantage heading into the second half. I mean, 52 points is never, um, is never acceptable no matter, no matter what it is. Uh, we, we brought up that, that, uh, you know, kind of amongst your personal oh, yeah. relationship that, that it's UVA next, but, but taking aside from the fact that you started your career there, how important is this game for, as you mentioned, it's the ACC, everybody can play. UVA may be having a down season, but you still have to be locked in like we just talked about for the for the full game and and get things rolling. How important is it for your season, this game on Wednesday? Oh, yeah, it'll be huge. It'll be huge. Um, you know, we let one go uh, against VTech, um, and that was, you know, a big loss just because, you know, that would have been only one loss for us in conference. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we got lucky with, you know, Pretty much all the other teams behind us kind of losing, so uh, we're still kind of in second place. But um, just just locking in on this this uh, locking in on this this Virginia game will definitely give us a more comfortable position um, heading into the weekend. So it every win matters, um, especially in this league. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many bids we'll get heading into March. So uh, you know, winning as many games as possible, it, it all matters. Actually, you know, I know we're we're using up a lot of your time here, but. Uh, no, we're good. When when you bring up the uh, the ACC bids, uh, is is it weird? I mean, I, I grew up with the ACC. Like you're going to get eight bids. You're going to get like it's it's eight or ten, right? It, that's how it is. This yeah. year, I, I don't know how much yeah. you pay attention to the bracketologists. I don't know if yeah. how, I don't know how long you have to go to school to become a bracketologist. <laughs> but uh, the bracketologists are saying it could be three, it could be four, which makes the regular season so much more cutthroat in the ACC if, if, if you're only getting that many teams in like how how are you guys tracking that I mean you brought up how many bids there's going to be is is that something the team is is talking about yeah yeah I mean 100 um, percent I mean it, it, you know every game matters and 
not gonna lie, this is the most I've, I've talked about in terms of quads and quad one, quad two, <laughs> threes, fours. Like, <laughs> you, it out, you let me know because sometimes <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. Oh my gosh, this is the most um, I've, I've talked about the net ranking and <laughs> like all that stuff. I mean, but it, it all matters. I'm um, heading to um, you know the postseason, so like you said, I mean, it is definitely way more cutthroat than you know it's ever been throughout my five years of playing in the conference. Okay, see, obviously the net rank is in bracketology. This is never a fun conversation. So let me ask you a fun question. It's just my final question for you. When yeah. you guys win in Charlotte, so tomorrow, what's your first choice of flavor ice cream following a road win? Since you've been around Keats for a while, we know the the ice cream celebrations are, are his forte. Yeah, yeah. Um. Okay, so it's a 7 o'clock game. We'll probably end around like 9. I love the detail. I we'll love the detail. It's about 10, so I'm trying to think. It's, what's it's, it's UVA, though, so they're going to shorten the game. It'll be like 8.45. They're going to try to <laughs> get quick. <laughs> but you get it out the arena around 10, so, I mean, probably – I mean, I don't know what's open in ice cream places. I mean, probably we'll probably just get some insomnia, insomnia cookie. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> that's usually open late, so that'll probably be the go-to. Get that NIL deal. Uh, <laughs> Casey, we appreciate you for taking the time. Good luck the rest of this season. We'll be paying attention. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me.